Hi, my name is Ian Beats. I've been asked on more than one occasion how I went about nickel plating some parts of my wee BSA Bantam, which I'm currently restoring. That 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 followed from a a, a quick video I posted on the BSA Bantam Club forum. Quite a few people have contacted me and said, "How how do you do that? How do you do that?" Um, and I can see why. Because there's a lot of people are buying uh, um, restorable bikes, but don't want to go the whole hog and, and, and make them all sort of mint and shiny and concourse like. They just want something that looks reasonable and to ride it, and it's not going to cost them an arm and a leg to do it. Because once you start buying new chrome parts, I can tell you that the pricing mounts up. Um, I'm not quite sure sure how much uh, things like kickstart levers and all the rest of it cost but I know that to buy a, a, a shiny set of wheels for a BSA Bantam it'd be about 300 quid and then you've got the cost of lacing it unless you can do it yourself so I decided on my Bantam to nickel plate things that were too far gone um, the wheels I managed to kind of save, they were really brown rust and I, I, I saved them by rubbing them down with kitchen foil and vinegar and they turned out not too bad, they're actually usable, they are badly pitted but they're usable and they look okay. So things like nuts and bolts and various parts, uh, kickstart levers, gear levers and other chrome bits that were rusty. Unfortunately, on my bike, they were too far gone. They were really a nice Scottish word, minging. Um, they were just too far gone to do anything with. So, should I buy new parts? Nice shiny new parts on an old 50-year-old bike? Nah, I don't think so. So what I decided to do was basically remove the chrome. Now, there's various ways of doing that. You can do it chemically, which I wasn't interested in. Um, I think you can use sulfuric acid and such like things. Or you can do it the way I did it and get my orbital sander out and just ground off the, the, the chrome until it got down to, to metal. And, uh, and then by using finer grades and then finishing it on a polishing wheel, I got a reasonable shiny surface, or rather not so much shiny but smooth, and then nickel plated them. And they've been nickel plated outside. The bike lives outside. I don't have a garage, so my bikes live outside. So I don't get away with sort of bare metal because in no time at all it goes rusty. And I can see that on my BMW with cast iron this couple of days and the brown rust. And I noticed on some of the parts I'd, I'd lightly nickel plated, there was some little rust spots. So I brought them in and I'm going to do them again. So down to the video. How do you nickel plate? Well, first thing you do is decide what parts you're going to plate and then get a suitable size container. So I'm going to replate this, which is the uh, the gear lever for a D7 Bantam. And as you see, it just fits in there. And I can do the kickstart lever as well. I can even do a couple of nuts and bolts. Now these are the rear wheel spindle nuts. And uh, as you see, I've, 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 I've buffed them down, white sandpapered them, and got all the rust and the muck off. I've not been too fussy because I don't want them mint. I, w I want the bike to look as though it's been used. I don't want it to look kind of restored, if you know what I mean. I, I, I want to do it sympathetically. So I've left some little dings and nicks, but I want, I want them nickel plated such that they're not going to instantly go brown with rust. So... How do we do it? As I said, deciding what container you, you do. Remember, the bigger the container, the more electrolyte you're going to have to make. So this is just a shallow baking dish, which I wouldn't use for food anymore because I think this stuff's fairly toxic. Um, and obviously it's got to be something like uh, uh, a pot or a plastic. Even if you're doing small parts, a plastic jug. Uh, anything but a conductive container. You don't want a metal container that's conductive. So, you've got your container. What else do you need? Well, you need a power supply. <coughs> so, I've got my 
So, power supply. The general consensus is that you don't need uh, a powerful power supply. You don't need big voltages. And I'm using a little plug-in power supply, 3 volt, 300 milliamp, that uh, used to power some gadget long since dead. And I've got a box full of these little things. I tend to keep them. I've got all different voltages, 3 volt, 6 volt, 12 volt, goodness knows what else. Um, but uh, looking on the internet and, and looking at uh, YouTube videos, uh, it appears that you don't need a big voltage. And some people are just quite happy using batteries, a couple of batteries wiring series that, that, that works quite well. So this is what I've been using, a 3 volt, 300 uh, milliamp power, plug-in power supply. So I'm going to plug that in. And the nothing you think, but it's happening. There is electricity flowing around in there. In fact, I can just see little bubbles coming off the negative plate now. You may not be able to see them, but they're happening. And just to prove it's happening, I've got my multimeter here, which I'll turn on. I've got the positive connected to the positive plate. And to the negative, I will touch, and there we go, 3.84 volts. If I just put it in the electrolyte book, getting 2.2 odd volts. So there is electricity flowing through that liquid, through your electrolyte. And there I can see bubbles now, quite clearly, coming off the negative plate. So what that is doing is make an electrolyte. Now if you started off just with white, uh, plain white vinegar and salt, at this stage you just leave it until it turns green. You just walk away, have a cup of tea, whatever, and gradually it, it will start to turn green. Now I'm going to leave this on for a few minutes uh, because the stronger the electrolyte is, the quicker your, your uh, components will plate. You can, in theory, um, put your components in and start plating them straight away um, having not made any electrolyte just in white vinegar and salt but it will take longer because now the nickel is in the solution and I can see there's little bubbles fine bubbles coming off that so I'm going to leave that working away producing electrolyte and I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll get down to actually plating the pad. Okay, we're back. Let's continue. So, we've made the electrolyte. As you can see, it's nice and green there. Going nicely. And I can see lots of little bubbles coming off the uh, negative side. So what I want to do is uh, plate one of the parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replate the gear lever because it was very very lightly plated it could have done with some more to be honest with you but I wanted uh, really to make a wee video at the time and show it so I stopped it short a bit of polish but it uh, could do with a bit more and all I have to do now uh, one important thing is parts have got to be really really clean um, so you should really be quite scrupulous about cleaning your parts, give them a really good clean, um, degrease them. Uh, I mean, if you want to uh, go the whole hog, you can get things like alkali, alkali cleaners and acid etch and all that sort of stuff. I just give them a good rub down in white vinegar, and uh, that seems to do the trick for me. So, what do we do? Well, it's quite simple. I'm not even going to disconnect the power supply. You can if you wish. I'm just going to pop that in. Take the negative clip off that bit of uh, nickel and clip it onto, clip it this way, and clip it on to the part. And that will actually start plating um, and again just to prove it 
um, that it's working. Get me multimeter out and touch the part. There we are, 3.5 volts. And that's that's it. The main thing to consider, unlike when we're making the electrolyte where polarity didn't matter, um, when you're plating it does matter. The component that you're wanting to plate goes on the neg negative side and the nickel that you're plating from goes on the positive side. And to make sure I don't forget, I've actually soldered a bit of cable onto this and put it on the positive, there we are, red for positive, put on the positive clip as a constant reminder that I get it right. So I always remember the big, big bit of nickel is what I'm plating from and the negative goes on to what I'm plating. And I can see already there's bubbles appearing. Now, if you go on YouTube or wherever uh, and have a look at videos, you, you'll see the guys are moving it about and all that, you know, um, uh, they're, they're saying that's to avoid hot spots and such like. Well, I can't, I can't be bothered about it. I've got other things to do. So what I did, and this is optional, and there's various ways of doing it. I dug out my old aquarium bubbler thing. Now, if I just move that up there, there we go. You'll see this is an air bubbler for an aquarium. And what I did, I just popped it in. If I just pop it in there, it doesn't matter really where it goes, and plug it in. There we go. That creates a wee bit of movement. And that'll negate the, the need to constantly move the thing around. You can if you, uh, you, you can sit and wiggle it about if you want, but I, I, I found just leaving it like that is, is fine. The other thing uh, I've done, uh, sometimes do, if I just move that across there, if it'll move, come on, I've got all sorts of junk about here, come on. Is the other plate If I clip that on to there with this little jump lead and take that round and clip it on the positive there, I've got a better flow of nickel. It's going at two directions and especially since that's quite a long part. Now, as I say, that, that's fairly optional, but because I've got that extra bit of nickel lying about, I thought, might as well do something with it. So, I'll just let that bubble away. And that, that, that is it. Once you've made your electrolyte, that, it's as simple as that. All you have to do is make sure that your part is nice and clean and degreased. And once it's prepared for plating, you just connect it onto the negative side of your power supply, immerse it in your electrolyte and let it bubble away. Now you don't have to do what I've done here, uh, but I, I, th I thought give it a better chance, you know, um, have two bits of nickel rather than just one. And if you're using a very, very big component, maybe, I don't know if you're going to do a bit of an exhaust pipe and it's quite long and you've got it in a long bath. I, I would say it's, it's kind of mandatory to do something like this rather than have just one bit of nickel that's, you know, but that, that's just my, my idea. It's not necessary, especially for small parts. The other thing you could do while it's doing that, as you see, I've got these, uh, these nuts. I can quite easily just pop them in as well and connect them if I can. Where could I put them? It's, uh, <laughs> you 
Now remember this is only 12 volts so <laughs> I'm not going to, I don't, there's no risk of electric shock really but if you want to be on the safe side you can disconnect the power supply, I'll do that just in case there's children watching, disconnect the power supply, pop them in and I'll just wrap that around there. Make sure that's submerged and reconnect the power supply. There we are, safety first and all that. And uh, I'll just get my little uh, multimeter here, switch it on, and make sure that there's actually, yeah, yeah, we're getting a current flow. 2.91 volts, 2.91. Yep. I'm just touching on that bit of wire there. Getting almost three volts, so yep, they'll they'll start plating as well. Now I've got uh, a little coil of wire here, and that's really useful for stringing nuts and bolts. If you're doing quite a lot of nuts and bolts, you could string them together with a bit of wire. Um, I believe. The correct thing to do would be to, uh, now I'm not sure about this, uh, you can look it up on, on YouTube or wherever, uh, there is a type of wire that is inert, i.e. it's safe to put in the solution, it will not, it'll not upset things, it will not play it, I think it might be titanium, but don't hold me on that, check it out. So there we are, that's my little home nickel plating set up. And what will happen is that previously shiny bit of um, metal there will eventually it'll go sort of dull grey as as it plates within the nickel it, it will actually start to go a bit of a dull grey colour and what you do is you buff it up and polish it up and I again went onto eBay and got myself a uh, a set of polishing wheels for my drill and I've got three different wheel mop wheels and three different kinds of uh, polishing soap and I think it was less than a tenner it wasn't all that uh, expensive and uh, using them I was able to polish up the parts quite well so that's it quick recap you need a, a suitable size container, you need the electrolyte which you can make from vinegar and salt, you need a suitable power supply, either a battery or a low voltage uh, plug-in power supply and you need your nickel plates. To make the electrolyte you just have a nickel plate on each electrode and then when you want to nick, uh, nickel plate your part, take the negative clip off the nickel and put it on the part that you want to plate. So basically we've got the nickel particles basically going from the positive plate through the electrolyte and onto the part you're plating. And that is it nice and simple. Now if you want to really get into it what I'd advise you to do is to do further research. This is just a quick introduction of very basic plating. Uh, I would advise you to go on the internet, do a bit of research, have a look at all the different uh, videos on the subject which is exactly what I did um, and, and uh, it will all become clear if it isn't already.